Welcome to the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity's video podcast featuring Father James Flanagan, sole founder. This teaching is about the liturgy, our life. You want to give honor and glory to God. And this is something which uh, is one of the major purposes of Our Lady's Society. Uh, in Our Lady's Society, you are, uh, the major purpose, the, there are three major purposes. The first is to give honor and glory to God. The second is to exalt His Majesty. And the third is to manifest His greatness. Now, what does exalt His Majesty mean? That means that you restore all things in Christ, as Paul says. You, you restore everything in your life into Christ. That's, that's what exalting the majesty of God is. And that's what Paul says he is restoring all things in Christ. And so you have to learn how to live in Jesus and, and, and restore things into Christ. And that your life is lived in Christ and that you know where you're coming from. And uh, then you manifest his greatness in apostolic works. In the apostolic works of your life, you manifest the greatness of God. And uh, that's necessary for all of us. And uh, those are the purposes. But the honor and glory of God is the first purpose. And every one of us is here to give honor and glory to God not to give honor and glory to ourselves, but to give honor and glory to God. So open yourself now to, to these beautiful purposes uh, that God has you here for and is bringing forth in fruitfulness in your life so that your life becomes fruitful. God wants our lives to be fruitful. And we want to be fruitful in those wonderful purposes for which God created Our Lady Society and lived those in their fullness. Now, we want to uh, therefore see that Jesus is Lord and uh, how do we do that? we got to put Jesus first and uh, we've got to put him in first place in our life. And there was a, a mother and uh, she sent her son away to school. He had never been away from his mother. And she gave him a little package and she said you open this when you get to school and so he opened it up because he was very anxious to see what his mother had given him and it was a sign and it said God comes first your neighbor comes second and you come third she put her own son in last place it's last and lowest and least. And she put God in first place. And that's what we have to do in our lives. We have to put God in first place, put others in second place before ourselves, and put ourselves last. Whereas the world in which we live is doing it topsy-turvy. Put yourself first. I'm number one. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't do that. You put God first. And Jesus has to be first in our lives. Every one of us. And the Trinitarian life of Jesus for us. Because Jesus' life is Trinitarian. When you receive Holy Communion, for example, you receive the body blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. When you receive the divinity of Jesus, 
you receive the Trinity, you receive the Trinity. You can't receive divinity. You can't separate them. So you receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity. You receive the Trinitarian life of Jesus in Holy Eucharist. And that's very necessary for you. And that's what John Paul the Great said. Put the soul and divinity on too, not just the body and the blood, the soul and the divinity is what you receive. Now, uh, you want to open yourself, therefore, uh, to the fullness of this gift of Jesus in Holy Eucharist. And, uh, uh, one of the difficulties that I have right now is uh, I just said my eyes operated on and uh, when you have your eyes operated on for a while you can't read uh, and it's a little difficult for me so uh, you, you have to excuse me that I, I have to keep looking here as, as though I don't understand what I'm reading. <laughs> it's just I can't read. <laughs> But uh, what I'm trying to show you, and uh, I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but is uh, you see the greatness of liturgy. You, see, you, you don't want to uh, put it aside of, well, we already celebrated Mass, that's the end, let's get to work. <laughs> no, you, you want to be very careful. And, and recognize that all your strength is, is coming right through your liturgy. And it's coming to you in a way that will bring you to the divine life which God has prepared for you. And the fullness of, of that divine life. So that you, you recognize things as they really are. And uh, you want to recognize also that uh, the blessed doctrine of, of life is uh, imitating divine truth. Uh, I, I find that Jesus is always moving you uh, in the into a relationship of oneness with him. He tells you, Father, I want them to be one with me. And uh, is God our Father going to make us one with him? Yes, he is. And, and how is he doing that? Well, he's making us one in divine truth. He brings Jesus to us as the truth. And uh, that's what the liturgy does. She brings Jesus to us as the fullness of truth. And it's divine truth. It's not a truth that comes and goes or passes. It's divine truth. It's forever. And uh, that divine truth is, is so necessary for us. It's... Uh, it, it brings us into a relationship. And uh, what I see lacking in people's lives uh, is relationships. I see them tremendously lacking uh, because uh, they, they don't have this relationship with Christ. And I find that they have a, a, a trouble with relationship with Christ, and then they have trouble in relationship with Our Lady. And you have some who love Our Lady and some who don't even want to mention it. And then you have their 
uh, have a, don't have a relationship with their souls, they don't have a relationship with their passions, they don't have a relationship with their perfections of their father, they don't have a, a relationship with uh, <clears throat> others and their needs, and uh, uh, they can only relate to certain people, their relationships are broken uh, all over the place. And uh, we want to heal those broken relationships. And, and we heal them by liturgy. That's how you heal them. And that's how you bring them to a fullness, is, is to the liturgy. You bring them to the, to the blessing because, you see, nobody touches your life accidentally. They all touch your life providentially. And that's to bring you to the fullness of the relationships of the Trinity, of communion with the Most Holy Trinity, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's where all your relationships are leading you. And they're leading you to be our Father's family in eternal life, and to be one family. And, and these relationships in your life are very important. And you've got to bring out the fullness of those relationships. Where do you get the strength to do that? The liturgy. The liturgy gives you the strength to live relationships in their fullness. And, and, and so look to your liturgy for all your needs. And especially in relationships, because you got to come to this eternal communion that God has prepared for us all in the kingdom of heaven. And, uh, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> there's just one thing that I would like to uh, share with you and know, which, and that's the spirit with which you do things. You know, I mean, there are people who have tremendous gifts and, and can do things very handily. But the thing that I find is uh, you have to do things with joy. You have to live your life with joy. And it's a joy that no one can take from you. If you're going to do things, do them joyfully. You know? If it's worth doing, it's worth doing joyfully. <laughs> we have plenty of sad sacks. <laughs> we don't need any more. <laughs> and uh, we do need joy, though. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you why. Because if I see that you're joyful, I'll believe you. But if I don't see you're joyful, <laughs> I got enough problems of my own. I don't need them anymore. <laughs> you know? Do everything that you do with a fullness of joy. Yeah. And uh, people believe you then. Yeah. And that's what they look for. They won't tell you that, but that's what they're looking for. You know, you can tell them the greatest things in the world and if you, don't, if you don't show a spirit of joy in that, they don't believe you at all. Uh, you can be a great scholar and a great philosopher, and, uh, but uh, they, they don't move. That doesn't move people. Uh, but the joy moves them. Uh, if I see somebody and they're joyful, uh, they're all right. I can move with them. I see somebody that's down and wants to tell me all his problems. And now pity me, hurry up and pity me more. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'll see you next week. <laughs> uh, please, uh, do what you do joyfully. Please, and uh, that way 
God can work through that joy. And it's a joy that nobody can take from you. Uh, I remember I was at uh, they have a movement, uh, marriage encounter they call it. And there was this priest there and he was given the marriage encounter. And, uh, so the priests are supposed to dialogue with each other, you know. This priest was, uh, he said to me, he dialogue, you know, he, with me, he said, you know, Jim, he said, I'm so discouraged, I'm so sad. You know, I worked 15 years, and I had built up all these couples in marriage encounter. The marriage encounter was booming, and the, and the people were coming to the marriage encounter. And all of a sudden, uh, one of the couples moved away because of his work, and, and then the next couple moved away, and the next one, and the next. And now I'm back at square one, and I don't have anybody to be leaders of my marriage encounter. And I'm so down, and I, I get so sad and discouraged, and I don't know what to do with myself. And he said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I get more joyful. He said, what? He said, do you understand what I'm talking about? And, and I said, well, I think I do. Uh, he said, well, you answered that you get more joyful. And I said, yeah, that's what I do. And he said, well, what does that do? Well, that gets me more joyful. And uh, <laughs> if I get more joyful, then uh, I I'm fine. You mean when all these terrible things happen, you get joyful? And uh, I said, yes. And then... And then what do you do after that? Then I get more joyful. <laughs> and he said, I can't talk with you. I gotta talk with someone that gets down and sad and miserable and worried. <laughs> why, why not get more joyful? All your sadness and all your discouragement and all your, isn't gonna help you at all. It's not going to solve the problem. So just get more joyful. <laughs> and uh, so you want to have that spirit of joy. You know, when things go against you, become more joyful. That's the way to, to move beyond them. And to come and free yourself. One of the things that I see almost inevitably in people's lives is they're not free. They don't do things freely. But Jesus does everything free. And, and that's what your liturgy does. It frees you so that you can do things freely. Because God wants you to be free as his sons and daughters. He really wants you to be free and to do everything you do freely. Not because you're forced, not because it's necessary, not because it's what they want you to do, but you do it freely. Jesus did everything freely. And he wants you as sons and daughters of your father, to do everything you do freely. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how much you dislike it, no matter what's happening, freely. I'm here freely. Not because uh, Father Sam asked me to come here. Huh? I'm here freely. <laughs> 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 And uh, my buddy, the deacon, he said, ah, you don't have to go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's only Father Sam. <laughs> you know? I said, no, I'm going. I'm going freely. <laughs> He'll hide now. <laughs> <laughs>
No, you, you want to do what you do freely. You, you don't want to, to do it because you have to do it or because it's expected of you. Or do it freely and, and you'll be happy. You know, that'll bring you a lot of happiness, you know. Nobody can vent you in, you know. <laughs> and uh, so keep that spirit of freedom because there's so few people in the world that are free. They've all got restrictions and this and that. And they want to control you and do this and that. And, you know, that's what they're doing all over the world. I just want to be free. And uh, so, uh, oh, you've got a cold, you know, and you get this. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You know. Baloney. <laughs> <laughs> and you just got to like baloney. <laughs> you know? And do it freely. And do everything freely for Christ. Because Christ did everything freely. He didn't do anything because he was forced to. When his father said, Go down there and save them all, sure, Father, I'll be happy to do it. And he did it. And, uh, but, Go on for a few more hours, but I, I think <laughs> yeah, we we'll give you a blessing, the blessing of Almighty God, and the covenant of communion with the Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Our Lady as daughter of the Father, Mother of the Son, Spouse of the Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.